My name is Noah A. Waters III. I am the writer-director of Relationship Killers. Relationship Killers is an actual mental health term uh, that references uh, behaviors and uh, certain words, uh, speech patterns that people can use while in a romantic relationship that would make them want to end the relationship uh, or kill the relationship, therefore Relationship Killers. Uh, for me, I, I really wanted to tell a story about, uh, you know, two layered and damaged people whom the only thing more potent, more strong uh, about their personalities and who they are, besides their mental illness issues, is their love for one another. And then, so that kind of just dictating, dictated uh, the prose itself. And um, because I knew the characters so well, the writing process was uh, pretty quick. Um, you know, uh, uh, I'm a big time character writer. Uh, I love getting into the nitty gritty and the psychology behind my characters. And um, I think all of that just made it that much easier for me to present them and introduce them to the world uh, in a therapy session because psychoanalysis is something that I've been through a lot in my life and I uh, wanted to try and show uh, a lens into a world that we don't see a lot of uh, uh, romantic comedies from. Um, and then I wanted to put my own twist on it, which of course was the suspenseful noir uh, comedy side of it. Um, I've been with uh, the characters for a very long time. so. Uh, these two characters exist in a cinematic universe I've been working on since I was a kid entitled Lethal Ladies. And Lethal Ladies is uh, a world of noir. Uh, it's, it's both in this verse, it's on um, alternate universes. Uh, some of the stories go out in the space and around different planets. Um, but Lethal Ladies for me is all about um, character-driven storytelling from the noir genre um, uh, and then with you know females obviously starring and uh, being the main character in each episode um, and this was my introduction of the world as well as two characters from that world to our world the film production got itself got moved multiple times for COVID um, and we actually uh, about a week prior to when we were supposed to start principal photography, lost about 30% of our budget uh, that had been donated, including some craft services mail that were donated uh, that we had to scramble and try and replace. Um, I lost my camera package, I lost my G&E package, and had to scramble the week prior to production and call in literally every line producing favor that I've stacked up over you know, a 13 year line producing career to get this thing in the can. And I'm incredibly happy of the journey that we took together to get here. I'm very happy with my cast, very happy with my crew. Uh, and I'm very happy with what's on screen. Uh, so when we were casting, you know, I work uh, with the same CDs uh, again and again because I, really can only work with incredibly method and hardworking actors who are willing to go the distance with me with character work and background and backstory. And um, you don't find that a lot with film and television actors. And for this film specifically, um, the role of Braven was very difficult to cast because I needed someone who could pull off, you know, stoic, and brooding, uh, but still be interesting as a character, not have a lot of words, but be very poignant with the words that she does use. And, um, you know, I needed someone, I, I remember, uh, so when I, when I uh, write sides for an audition packet, I never use my actual screenplay for the project. I always end up um, writing separate sides, a separate script specifically for the audition process 
and it's normally from the character's backstory. Uh, and with this one, you know, I needed to have the character kind of lunge at the camera at the end of the audition. And uh, not everyone did it. In fact, a very few did, and one of them was Asia. And Asia did it with such power and passion that it scared me. And I was like, okay, you know, I can, I, I can deal with that. And then, um, you know, reached out to her, uh, asked her if she was interested in doing a, a Southern English accent, uh, asked her, uh, you know, if, uh, about her process. And, you know, she let me know she hadn't really done anything yet. She was just getting started. And I was really excited because a lot of times when actors work with me who've been in the business for a while, the first you know couple of rehearsal days are me breaking their bad habits from the film and TV industry. Uh, but with Asia, she didn't have any of that, but she did have a lot of talent, uh, a lot of uh, tenacity, and a willingness to work with me and go the distance to do justice to Braven. And, and she did a phenomenal job, and now she's a dear friend and a producing partner of mine, and I'm very happy that we're still working together. Hi, my name is Asia Loren. I am an actor and a producer on Relationship Killers. I play the role of Haven, um, and she's a, a lot of fun. I, um, I auditioned for this role ooh, back in 2020, 2020. Uh, maybe the spring of 2020 is when I auditioned. Um, Met Noah, got casted, started rehearsals um, once a week for a few months. We had a few COVID delays, um, and then we finally got to shoot it in, in March of 2021. And after shooting, I decided to be nosy as an actor and a, just a lifelong learner. I, I reached out to Noah to say, "Hey, like, how's how's post production going?" and he was like, if you're interested, you know, um, in learning, you can absolutely like shadow and look over my shoulder and come to meetings and things like that. So he first brought me on as kind of like, I would say almost like an intern or a volunteer. Um, and then just we started working together and, and collaborating more on everything from, you know, the score to the color to the everything with post, everything with editing, everything with cutting the film. And I came on as a producer and this is the first time I've produced anything. Um, but it was really just a big learning experience for me as a new actor um, and just new as a filmmaker and working with Noah has been just, I mean, I'm so lucky. I'm just really lucky and the film was great. It turned out great. Loved watching it in theaters. Um, I will say up to this point though, one of the tougher things, aside from COVID, I think COVID delayed everything, but um, I, what was one of the tougher things? I think finance, budgeting, like not the budget, but the actual from getting the money to make the movie. Um, being new here, I, I didn't know really what went into filmmaking and how all of that worked. And like now I'm like, oh, money is a big deal. Um, money helps you obviously push the, the ball across the court. Um, but yeah, so that was probably the biggest thing. Other than that, it was like working with family. Um, and yeah, there's more to come with the Lethal Ladies franchise, so I'm really excited. Um, you will definitely see more from Noah and myself. So thank you so much. Greetings, I am E. Tally II, and I play two in Relationship Killers, which was perfect for me because I love making people laugh, I love making myself laugh, and two was doing all kinds of making people laugh in a very grand and flamboyant and powerful way. Hallelujah. So, <laughs> uh, I first met uh, Noah at this place called Superba House, uh, which is in, um, which, high, which hills is that? One of the hills. One of the hills. Uh, they were having an event there, and so we, we met. I was wearing my fabulous kilt at the time, you know, so I was feeling myself. And so I went and saw Noah, and we just clicked immediately. Uh, he told me about his film, and I was like, absolutely, I'd love to do it. And so the rest is history. The premiere was tonight, it was fabulous, and uh, now we're just basking in all of the glory of the activity and the event. So my background is in performing arts. I got my bachelor's degree from the University of Michigan. Yes, I'm a Wolverine, and that was in uh, flute performance. 
But then I got my MFA as a Hillberry Repertory Theater Fellow from Wayne State University. And uh, I've been uh, playing the flute for years, been uh, working in theater for years. And uh, most recently, I got to do a little bit of both. I was in the uh, Will Smith's Bel Air promo commercial during Super Bowl Sunday. And so they hired me to play a little bit of flute and to do a little bit of rapping uh, in the commercial. So that really helped catapult me to uh, another level in my performing arts career. So uh, I keep busy. And I also teach and lead and choreograph R&B line dances throughout Los Angeles and in New Jersey. Now that everything is via Zoom now, I can actually lead classes the way I used to on the East Coast and then pick up some new classes here on the West Coast. And uh, they're going very well. So when you're a performing artist, you like to, you like to uh, explore all kinds of performing arts. And so I get a chance to do that here. Hey, babe, could you do me a favor? Sure, babe. Remind me to thank you for making sure we're here a full hour prior to 10 minutes before our actual appointment. Could you not right now? We need this. Your name is Betty Gray, and yours is Bravian. Oh! Yes, it's Gaelic for she will for you. Really? No.